Most of you are probably aware that you can use the GPT-4 model on ChatGPT, but you may not also know that you can access GPT-4 on the Playground mode. So the Playground mode essentially is a back-end tool which allows you to do more customizations to get better outputs using GPT-4. As you can see here on the right hand side, you have a couple of different options which you can choose from. You have the temperature settings, the maximum length, the top P, frequency penalty, and the presence penalty. So by playing around with these settings, you'll be able to customize your outputs much better compared to using ChatGPT by itself. To access the GPT-4 model, all you have to do is head over to mode and then head over to chat and you want to change the model to the GPT-4 model. If you don't see the GPT-4 model, then you need to apply for the GPT-4 API. I'll leave a link below this video in which you can apply for the GPT-4 API. So once you have access to the playground mode, as you can see, it is a little bit different compared to the interface of ChatGPT. You have the system, the user, and you have an assistant. So essentially the system will allow you to be able to tell the AI what to do. So you'll be able to give more instructions to the AI so it will have more context on the type of content in which you're creating. So for instance, if you're creating a specific type of chat box and you want to have specific outputs um, in a specific style, you can go ahead and let it be known within the system section. So for example, you can tell the system that you are a witty and funny chat box that answers questions about life but in an engaging and fun way. And then you can go ahead and now enter a message which a user may have for this specific system. So here's the response which we got back, the age old question, the meaning of life is like a good recipe, it's different for everyone and the secret ingredient is always love or is it tacos? Anyways, it's up to each person to find their own flavor and savor it. So as you can see, it did follow the instructions, it gave us a very funny and witty answer about life. But again, you can use this system to really hone in and focus on the outputs that you're trying to get back for your specific use case. Another example could be, you can tell the system that you're an expert financial advisor who offers actionable but easy to understand information to people about money, finances, and financial freedom. Answer every question in a way that even a fifth grader could understand. And now again, you can go ahead and add a new message and you can ask it any question that you like. Okay, so I've went ahead and asked it to explain the stock market and let's see the type of output in which we're able to get back. Here is a response in which we got back. The stock market is like a big store where people buy and sell small pieces of different companies called stocks. When someone buys a stock, they own a tiny part of a company. People try to buy stocks when they're cheap and sell them when they're worth even more. So as you can see, it really did follow the instructions and it offered us a very easy to understand um, explanation of what the stock market is. So now if you want to actually go ahead and customize your outputs, this is where you can use these settings on the right hand side. The first setting is the temperature setting. So this will allow you to increase or decrease the creativity of your outputs. If you increase the temperature, the more creative outputs you will get back. If you decrease it, the less creative outputs you will get back. Below that will be your max length. If you want to get longer forms of um, outputs, you can go ahead and increase this and this will allow you to get longer um, content outputs. And below that are your top P, frequency penalty and presence penalty. You can leave the top P to the default setting. And below top P will be your frequency penalty. By increasing this, you decrease the amount of repetitive words the AI outputs will have. So essentially, if you want to um, have less repetitive outputs, you want to go ahead and increase this number. I would recommend increasing this to maybe between 0 0.2 to 0 0.4, um, just so that your, your AI isn't repeating any content. And below frequency penalty will be your presence penalty. Again, your presence penalty will allow you to be able to tell the AI to write about more novel ideas or topics. So again, if you want it to be less repetitive, you want to go ahead and increase this. So for this example, I'll be increasing both of these to 0.2. I'll be increasing the temperature to 0.8 and I'll leave all of the settings um, as is. Let's go ahead and run the same input and see if we're able to get different outputs. So this was the output in which we got back. As you can see, it's kind of the same from the original output, but when you're starting to generate longer pieces of content, that's where the frequency penalty and the presence penalty really helps, and also the temperature. But if you're generating short um, pieces of content, you may not see a big of a difference because chat GPT or GPT-4 is really, really good at giving you high quality creative content already. So only in longer forms of copy, you really see the differences by using these settings on the right hand side here. And here's the output in which we got back. Being financially independent means having enough money saved up to take care of your needs and without needing to ask others for help. It's like having a big piggy bank that you can dip into when you need something like new clothes, toys, or even fun activities. It's important because it helps you feel more in control of your life and allows you to make more choices um, that make you happy. So as you can see, this um, is a very easy to understand explanation. So we do see that um, by adding in these instructions here, you are able to get much better outputs and more uh, customizable outputs based upon your specific use cases. So let's go ahead and run this back. We'll increase the frequency penalty to about 0.7. I just want to do a quick test to see 
what difference that will make in terms of our outputs and we'll also go ahead and increase the temperature here let's go ahead and run the same input and see if we're able to get a different output so here's the new output that we got back with our new settings being financially independent is like being the boss of your own money tree imagine you can plug dollars off the branches whenever you need them without having to ask anyone else it's important because when we can take care of our own needs and wants we feel proud and confident plus it makes us better at decision making teaching us how to spend wisely on things that matter the most to us so as you can see this is a much better output in my opinion than what we got back from the original content so you can definitely go ahead and play around with these settings to see what works best for your specific use case for these examples, let's actually go ahead and run them into an AI detection tool to see what percentage was detected by AI. So this is the result of the content in which we changed the settings, we increased the temperature, we increased the frequency penalty, um, and this um, is a 100% original content. Now let's go ahead and do the same for the first piece of content when we didn't change any of the settings on the right hand side here. And let's go ahead and give this a scan and as you can see it is 55 or 57 percent original and 43 percent AI. So when you actually go ahead and change the temperature settings and the frequency penalty settings on the right hand side you have a higher chance of passing these AI detecting tools. And this is not just only for my example I actually saw this in a couple other examples of other YouTubers. When you change the settings on the right hand side um, the AI uh, writes in a more human-like form. It doesn't really repeat topic or sentences, which allow you to increase the likeness of passing these AI detection scores. So that's another method that you can use if you want to reduce the amount of content that can be detected by an AI detection tool within your copywriting. With that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video and I hope that you guys learned a tip or two that you can use on the GPT Playground to help you get better outputs. If you did, let it be known by giving us a big thumbs up and subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, stay well.